Hello there. Today I want to walk you through how to design an algorithm, the Grog Brain way. So recently, while I was building the program video games course, we had a bit of an issue where basically we had this level data coming in. So this is what it kind of looked like. And you can see these ones represent where tiles are. So I'm making a 2D tile game. And the ones are where the tiles are and the zero is where the air is. So the colliders ended up looking something like this in a naive implementation. And so we had tons and tons and tons of colliders in the level. And we didn't really want that. We wanted to have something a little bit more efficient so we could make larger levels without checking all the tiles. Now there's a couple of things we could have done. We could have done a broad phase sweep, which would mean we basically get the character's position. Let's say the character is here in this tile and they're moving up this way. Then we could check around where the character is and where the character is going to be in that direction. So we could check sort of these, all these tiles here and we could check for collisions against those. We could do something like that. Or we could try to combine the tiles, which is what we ended up doing, into a bit of a better design, something like this. So we've only got four here, rather than, I think this is 18 or something like that. So, how do we go about designing something like this? And why would we want to do that? Well, since we made our own engine, we had our own collision detection code, which means that we could use whatever subset of collision resolution, collision detection that we wanted. So we decided to just go with rectangles versus rectangles, because that's all we needed. So we've got our rectangle versus rectangle collisions, and and that's all well and good, but we don't want to check all of the rectangles. Another thing is, if you were using a custom, or not a custom, if you were using a game engine like Godot or Unity, you may have problems with these kinds of tile colliders where your character's walking along here and then it gets stuck on a little invisible edge that you can't see. I've seen many, many forum posts about this and the solutions that are provided don't seem to work all too well. But luckily we have all of our own custom tech so we can easily fix those kind of issues. So how do we go about designing going from this to this? Well, first, what we might do is search Google. We'll scour Google, we'd read a bunch of Stack Overflow posts, we'd read a bunch of forum posts, which is what I did, which is how I know about those Godot and Unity issues. And then we might come away with an algorithm that looks something like this, or turns our data into something like this. So we've created this sort of polygon here. So we've got two polygons, but if you remember what I said before, our engine doesn't support arbitrary polygons. So now, we're thinking, okay, well, we have to make new collision detection. Maybe we can just detect rectangle versus line. And then we've got to check, are we inside or outside of this object? Or maybe we can implement something like GJK and it's all getting really complicated really quickly. So let's just not do that. Let's go back to our data and let's have a look at it. So what have we got here? This is the same data, but we've labeled the array indices. So you can imagine this data comes from a level editor or something, and this is the order that we get the data back. So we've got zero at the top, and then we go across, and then we go down. So we go across, then down. Pretty straightforward, but what does that tell us? Or rather, what does that give us? If we imagine that we're looping through this data, we start at zero, we say, okay, we're, we're inside a solid tile, so let's start building a little rectangle here. And then we go to one, we're like, oh, we were just in a tile, so let's extend the rectangle across. And then we go to two and three and four, and we repeat that process. Then when we get down to five, we're like, oh, we're on a new row, so now we can't possibly extend a rectangle. Or I guess we could try, uh, but we might get some issues with that, so we might create a really large rectangle here that includes this eight and nine, and then that would be a bit of a problem. So what I decided to do is I thought, okay, since the data is already laid out like this, we can just combine the rectangles horizontally and end up with something like this. Great, that's already much better. We already have many less rectangles to check. 
many less points of potentially getting stuck in weird edge cases. But then I thought, well, I've got the data like this, surely we can just do the same thing, but vertically, right? So let's have a look at the code for combining the rectangles into wide rectangles. The implementation isn't that important. It's pretty straightforward. We just create a cell and we extend the cell if the previous one was something, right? And then we append to this list of right, wide rectangles and that gives us this shape here. And what does that give us in the array? So we've got this wide rectangles array. We've got an index starting at zero, which is the top one. And then we go down one, two, and then we go across three, and then down and then across and then down and then across. That makes sense if you remember that our order was left to right, top to bottom. But now if we wanna combine vertically, well, we're gonna have a bit of a problem here because these will combine one and two. So that's, that's great. But then we go to three and then we go to four and those are at different X offsets. Whereas we kind of need three, four and five to be here or something like that. We need these ones to be next to each other in the array. So when we iterate, we can check if they are touching vertically, if they're the same width and they're touching vertically. So what we need to do is we need to sort this. So we need to sort basically like this. We check if the X positions are not equal and then we return uh, A.X less than B.X. So basically, uh, if you can see four and five have a different X position, which would be the left side here. So four becomes four comes before five. And then if they are equal, then we sort by the A, uh, the Y axis. And then we get something like this. So we've got zero, one, two, three, four, five. That's great. That's exactly what we wanted. So we can just do basically the same thing as before. And we can create our big rectangles now, or merge rectangles, sorry. Uh, we create our big rectangle, which is the instance of a large rectangle. And then we basically do a few checks here if it's the same X position, and if it's the same width, and if they're abutting. So if they're on top of each other. I could have used if they're stacked or something. I don't know why I used that word, but that's the word I used. And then we just say if, the, if all of these conditions pass, then we extend our rectangle. Otherwise, we're done and we merge our rectangle and then we have to merge the last one here because that doesn't get handled by this loop. And that's it. And then we just set the big rectangle to the new rectangle. So it's pretty straightforward. And what does that give us? That gives us this, which is exactly what we wanted. Now we have only one of those weird little sticky edge case things on the inside here, one on the outside here, and that's about it. But you know, in our engine, we don't actually have a problem with that. But if you did, you could see how this would be a much better result. And also, I should mention that our game that we're building is a Metroidvania. So we prefer to have these flat, long platforms. But if you were building something that was primarily travel, where you were prim primarily traveling vertically, you might want to change this algorithm to have vertical precedence. And you could do that easily. So you would just sort it, combine it vertically, and then combine it horizontally. So it'd be the opposite way. And that's it. That's how you design an algorithm. If you're interested in this kind of stuff, check out my website, programvideogames.com slash free. There is a free Pong course on there, which goes over some collision detection and resolution stuff, which I think you might find interesting. And also uh, sign up to my newsletter, which you can do through this website as well. And that's it. I'll see you in the next one.